All right, so hopefully uh, you have got the Z formula down, so you took a few moments to practice it until you got the correct answer. So what I've done is I have added a source voltage of 120 volts. And we'll go ahead and say that the frequency is 60 hertz. Okay? So we have a total voltage now hooked up to all of these components in parallel of 120 volts. We know that impedance is now 130.16 ohms. So I have all my own values, so you can go ahead and fill those in. So you have 400 ohms, 200 ohms, 600 ohms, 600 ohms, and 200 ohms. All right, so this is what we have already, okay? So what you want to do now is you want to look at the total voltage, okay? So total voltage is 120 volts. So remember, our key thing here is this is parallel. So if I take my meter leads and I measure across my source, I should get 120 volts. If I take and measure across each component, I'm going to also have 120 volts. And that's because in parallel, we have the same point of connection, okay? So all of these components go to that common node, okay? So it has the same potential as the source. So it doesn't matter how many components I put out here. I can have 30 components, but if they're hooked up in parallel to this 120 source, or our total voltage here, 120 is everywhere. So we know that VR1 is 120 volts, VR2 is 120 volts, VL1 is 120 volts, VL2 is 120 volts, and VC is 120 volts. So we have 120 volts across the board, everywhere, okay? So again, this circuit's very simple. Um, I'm going to post another circuit this week with a few a um, little bit weirder missing values, so look for that Wednesday afternoon. Um, and then um, on the test, again, you'll just be working a circuit this time. No multiple choice or anything like that. It'll just be a circuit that you fill out, um, attach your work, and submit it to Blackboard, um, and then that's it, okay? So, looking at what we have now, every column, we have a voltage and we have an ohm value now, okay? So the biggest, I guess the biggest hill to climb in the RL para, RLC parallel circuit world is finding the Z, okay? That could take time. It could take you five or ten minutes for some people <coughs> just to find impedance. So once you find that and you know a voltage, you're set, okay? So it's Ohm's Law from here. So remember that current all the way across the board here, everywhere, it's going to be the same Ohm's Law formula. When I have an Ohm value and I have a voltage value, all you have to do is the volts divided by the ohms, and that will give you these currents, every one of them. Okay? So we're going to get all of our currents, and then we're going to plug those numbers in, and we're going to check ourselves. Okay? So we have total current here, so let's do 120 divided by 130.16. So what you should get is 0.92 amps. So if you want to put it in milliamps, it's 922 milliamps or so forth, that is fine. Uh, but just because I have limited board space, I'm going to keep it as a whole number. So I have 0 0.92 amps. 
total. So remember, we're no longer in series. So once you find this current, that is not the current all the way across. What that says is that as soon as current leaves our source here, we have 0.92. But what happens is as the current spreads out over the circuit, some of it goes this way, some of it goes here, and it just divides up. Because a parallel circuit is what we call a current divider circuit. Okay? So we know 0.92 amps. So now let's look at apparent power. So remember that. VA is apparent power. Okay? So with that being said, everything in this column going across is going to be the same Ohm's Law formula. So to get power, we should know this, even from DC and last semester, is that to get any kind of power value, and that includes apparent power, true power, and reactive power, <clears throat> it's just volts times the current. And then we can check it using our triangle. So 120 times 0.92 amps, will give us apparent power. So 120 times 0.92. So that's going to give me 110.4 VA. All right, so I have a, an apparent power of 110.4 VA. So that means that the apparent power of this circuit so that's with the watts and the vars factored in. It's the equivalent of 110.4 VA. So now I'm going to move to my first resistor column. I have my volts and I have my ohms. So we can find current by doing 120 divided by 400. And that's going to give me 0 0.3 amps. <clears throat> And now to get power, I do the same thing I did over here. Remember, it's the same thing. So 120 times 0.3, so voltage times the current, <clears throat> that's going to give me 36 watts. So now moving to resistor 2, that column here. So now that means, that means that the 0.92 came out, and once it hit this first resistor, 0.3 of those amps went through here. And then the rest of it is going to go this way. All right, so 120 volts divided by 200 ohms will give me the second current. So 120 divided by 200, and that's going to give me 0.6. Okay, so now to get the power, 120, so the voltage, times the current. So 120 times 0.6 is going to give me 72 watts. <clears throat> Alright, so now we're at the inductors. So I have VL1, IL1. XL1 and VARS L. It's actually VARS L1, but for space, I left the 1 and the 2 off here. All right, so remember, just because it's an inductor doesn't mean we work it any different. Ohm's Law is the standard here across the board. <clears throat> so even though it's not current equals voltage divided by resistance, we're still using an Ohm value equivalent which in the inductor and capacitor world is what we refer to as reactance. So voltage divided by reactance, which is an ohm value, will give me IL1, so current through inductor 1. So 120 divided by 600, and that's going to give me 0. So 
So now to get VARS, remember VARS is volts, amps, reactive. So it is just another version of power. We can't have true power across inductors and capacitors because their currents are out of phase. So when we do and we look at it and the voltage and current, when they are out of phase with each other, can't multiply positive and negative. There's no such thing as negative power. So we end up with reactive power across components that are out of phase. So 120 times 0.2, so VARS is the same thing. We treat it like power, just like we did these three already. So VL times IL gives me VARS. So 120 times 0.2. And that's going to give me 24. So now, the next column is really easy. So remember your proportions. If I have identical voltages and identical ohm values, that means the current and the VARs are going to be the same here. Okay? So you don't even have to work this column here again, okay, because you already have it here. Since these are both the same value, all the other values are going to be the same based on proportions. So IL2 is going to be 0.2 amps again, and VARS L is going to be 24 again. So now I arrive at the capacitor. So the capacitor, just like the inductor, Ohm's law stays. So if I know the voltage and I know the capacitive reactance, which is my Ohm value, I can find current. Okay, so Ohm's law states voltage divided by your Ohms gives you current. So 120 divided by 200 will give me 0 0.6 amps. Okay? And then VARS C, still reactive power, just like the inductor. So volts times current will give me VARS. So 120 times 0 0.6 will give me 72. So, that's all there is to it. So again, the biggest hill to climb here is going to be finding this impedance starting out. Okay? So maybe in the next circuit, I'll give you some currents instead of ohm values. Okay? But generally, you work it exactly the same. Okay? You still just want to look at your formula sheet and see what applies where so I know that was a big confusion on the test. So the tests were a lot like the worksheets. It's just I can't post entire circuits with the multiple choice. So it's just specific pieces of a circuit. But the method that you go about doing it is the same thing. And if it helps you out, I know a lot of you do this and you've told me you do this. And it reflects because I see hundreds and A's and high B's on the test is you just draw the circuit out and then write it in like it looks on the worksheet. And then you solve for what you need to find. So if that's an easier route for you to take, please do it. Okay? All right, so back to the circuit. So now take some time to comprehend this. Okay? So if you need to pause, work back through some of the stuff, please do. All right? So... Right now, what we're going to do is we're going to go and we're going to check ourselves via the triangles. Okay? So we're going to start out at the Ohm's Law, or I'm sorry, not the Ohm's Law, the Pythagorean Theorem or the current triangle. Okay? So the current triangle. So remember from the previous lesson earlier in the video, I gave you the three triangles for the parallel. So the current triangle, the impedance triangle, and the power triangle. 
Remember, we don't have a voltage triangle because voltage is the same. So what that triangle translates to is IT is equal to the square root of IR squared plus parentheses IL minus IC squared. So what you need to do is get your totals. Okay, so get your totals again. Remember, parallel current adds up, which is why we have a current triangle. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take and we're going to add up. So for the IR squared here, I'm going to add up all my IRs, and that's going to go right here. So I'm going to redraw this down here. So the two IRs added together, so 0.3 plus 0.6 is going to give me 0 0.9 squared plus. Next, I'm going to get an IL total to go right here. So IL1 and IL2 added together is 0.2 plus 0.2, which is 0 0.4. And then minus IC, I only have one of them, so that is 0 0.6, close my parentheses, and squared. Okay? Make this just a little smaller so it doesn't look like I'm looking at this big thing. Alright, so now... Once we do this, that should reflect and give us 0.92, okay? So let's do that in our calculators. So I'm going to do 0 0.9 squared plus parentheses 0.4 minus 0.6 close parentheses squared equals take the square root, and it gives me 0 0.921, okay? It's 0.921, which is what total current is, okay? So that worked out. So that means that using the current triangle, I checked all of my individual currents to make sure that it came out to 0.92, so now, we've already done that with impedance, okay? So we've already done that with impedance um, earlier, in, earlier on. So now we're going to do it with apparent power. So now we're going to write out our formula for apparent power, which is VA is equal to the square root P squared plus parentheses, Bars L minus bars C squared. All right, so down here, I'm going to redraw this. And I'm going to put what I need to in here. So P squared is going to be all of my powers added together. So 36 plus 72 equals 108. So I have 108 squared plus parentheses. So now I want to add up both of my VARs L's. So 24 plus 24 is 48. Minus 72 for VARs C. Close parentheses and squared. So when we put this into the calculator, we should check out and get 110.4. So let's do that. 108 squared plus parentheses 48 minus 72 close parentheses squared equals, take the square root, and I get pretty darn close. I get 110.6. So we always joked in class and said, hey, in the electrical world, let's call that good. All right? So everything is checked out. 
So now all that I have left to do, so let me unlock my computer here since it timed out on me. Okay, so all we have left to do is find power factor and angle theta. All right, so just like all of the other circuits, power factor and angle theta stays true throughout every circuit that we've done this semester. Okay, so just remember, with the exception, you do have to do Z divided by R instead of R over Z in parallel because that is a reciprocated triangle. Okay, so we're going to do this a couple of different ways. We're going to do it using the current triangle and the power triangle and see if we get the same thing. So what we have is first the power triangle, the A, we have power, and we are finding angle theta and power factor. So our formula for power factor is PF equals P over PA. Okay, so first we just want to find that ratio that percentage. That's our power factor. Okay? So, we're going to do P over VA. So, remember, since we have two powers, we're going to add the two powers together. So, 72 plus 36 is 108. So, I have 108 divided by VA 110.4. So 108 divided by 110.4 is going to be 98 or 0.98. Okay? So remember, power factor is a percentage, so we want to multiply that by 100. 0.98 times 100 is going to give me 98%. So now to get angle theta, I do the same thing. It's still P over VA. But remember, when I'm looking for this angle here, P is the adjacent side, VA Parent power is the hypotenuse. So adjacent over hypotenuse is going to be a cosine function. So it's going to be the inverse cosine. So take 108 divided by 110.4. It equals, and then take the inverse cosine, so second cosine, and that's going to give me 12 degrees. So, pretty darn good circuit, okay? Remember, 95% is kind of that golden number, that golden industry standard for percentage. So, a really high percentage here gives me a really low angle, okay? And again, that's because I do have that inductor and capacitor in there. If I took the capacitor out, this power factor percentage would be much worse, and the angle would be much larger, okay? So, let's do this using the current triangle and just check ourselves and see if we get the same thing. And if we do, that is a definitive way of checking your circuit. If you get the same thing using the power triangle as you do the current triangle, you're good to go. Okay? So, I have IT. So to get power factor, I'm going to do IR divided by IT. So remember, since I have two IRs, I do have to add these together. So 0 0.3 plus 0 0.6 is going to give me 0.9. And then IT 
t is 0 0.92. So 0 0.9 divided by 0.92 is going to give me 0.98. Multiply that by 100, and I have 98%. So we do angle theta now. So do the same thing again. Remember, adjacent over hypotenuse, so cosine, so do 0 0.9 divided by 0.92, and that gives me 0.98, don't multiply it by 100, take the inverse cosine to take that decimal back to a degree, and I got 12 degrees. So, I know that the circuit is correct because... Both triangles are proportional with each other. They have the same angle of separation. So it shows the same out-of-phase relationship with both triangles, and that's what you want to look for. Okay? So go back, rework this, rework it on your own. Um, so watch the video, and tomorrow I will be uploading a worksheet for, uh, for you guys, actually you'll have two worksheets. Uh, one of them is going to be a little tougher. And what I want you to do, I just want you to give it an attempt. Okay, So just attempt it tomorrow. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to upload that same circuit as a work-through video later in the week. Okay, So just remember guys, all the assignments this week I'm just going to make due next Tuesday which is the last day of class, okay? And again, this test is going to be just a little different, so it's going to be a circuit work, okay? Might be one, might be two circuits. If it's two circuits, there'll be a little bit more on the smaller side, okay? So if you have any questions, again, please feel free to ask. Um, if any of you guys lost power due to the tornadoes last night, please reach out to me via email or chat and let me know and I'll be um, happy to work with everyone because I know that there's a lot of power outages. I still have a lot of friends at Duke Energy that uh, they were telling me that mass power outages in the upstate. So I understand things like that come up and I'm willing to work with you guys. Okay, so if you have any questions, please let me know. But for now, work this. Work it until you get very good with it, and then move to the worksheets, okay? All right, so you guys have a wonderful rest of the week until I see you again via YouTube, and uh, please stay safe, and um, hopefully we will get through these hardships soon, and we'll be able to meet back in class. So if you need me for anything else, I'm here for you guys, um, so let me know. Thanks.